Do you know it's been 194 hours, 11 minutes, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 194 hours and 12 minutes since we uh, you did never the live show. remember I, to stop. I forgot clock. to stop it, so I run that. You know, I run that on yeah, the iPad yeah. because blah blah blah. I wonder blah, if blah. it actually kills the battery. I don't. That's know. what I was trying to figure out yeah. too. But I'm at. Um, and yeah. so your iPad, obviously, I guess you never turned it off that whole time. It's been on the entire time. You've been charging it. No, I didn't charge it once when I left. Wow. I just charged it before I left. I downloaded two movies to take with me. And that's been running movies. for a week in the background. And that's been running for a week in the background. Wow. It probably doesn't use a lot of processing power. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. How was Mexico? Well, you guys like my tan? You got a tan? You do look a little tan. Yeah, it looks like you went from chalky to pasty. <laughs> no, I, I have zero tan. I'm pretty pasty. I'll tell you why in a minute. Why don't I, why don't I do the intro? Do it. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com. Welcome to Raw Talk episode number 162. I am back. I am back from Mexico. Hola. Unfortunately. What do you mean unfortunately? <laughs> so I do not have any um, tan. The reason I don't have a tan is because I stayed out of the sun. They had it, so it was overcast, right? You do look a little tanner than normal, though. I probably do, but it was it was overcast the whole most of the time. Was it rained it? a little bit, which is fine. Didn't matter. Still 80 some degrees each day. Wow. Um, it's nice. And so I wore my jeans yeah and i wore my boots it's what you wear every day with a t-shirt and that's what i walked around in for some of the time but then when i once my hair went down after we went into the cave i did that underwater snorkeling in a cenote cenote in bless a you. underwater uh underwater cave that's it has stalactites and stalagmites and stuff that was fun snorkeling the there from playboy mansion because i got some pictures of that because uh, they have photographers that take it they charge what do you mean photographers they had people that push buttons uh, that take pictures of you zip lining, of you rappelling, and of you going and doing the snorkeling thing, and they offer it to you at the end for like just hired guns. Yeah, here's a camera. It was 125 bucks for the entire group. Okay. So the one company, they're like, we'll, we'll pay for that, and we'll send everybody a link to a Dropbox, which is nice because we should all have it. It was cool to have the group shots. Yeah, um, yeah of course, memories. So we're in the underwater caves and doing the snorkeling. Uh, I'll. <laughs> So I took the underwater camera, right? And have you used that before, or was that your first time? I've never used it, uh, and I have to say it, it's an absolute joke of a camera. Really? I mean, the concept is tremendous. I remember when we first saw it at Photo Plus like two years ago. Remember it was in like that cage they had? Yeah, this is the Nikon 1AW. Uh, yeah. This is the underwater version of their mirrorless camera, mm -hmm. which in bright daylight and outside, like I took that picture of uh, my buddy Drew with the eyes, the blue eyes, uh, in the water, in the ocean. Super hot. <laughs> He's ripped. He, he, his website is fitlife.tv. He's about that fit life. Yeah, some people know him already because he's pretty big on the internets. Um, those pictures are fine. Like, the quality of the image is good. But the problem with this camera is I'm sitting there in the, in the cave trying to set it up, and I can't... There, there's no external buttons to change no aperture or shutter buttons. speed. Mm. So everything's it's done through this. For me. You can't... It, it is an absolute abortion of a camera to try to use... What? Abortion of a camera. It's an abortion of a, it's a bull, it's an abomination. All right. Yeah. It's an abomination of a camera to try to do anything other than the auto settings. You can't change the aperture. You can't change the shutter speed. It's impossible to find anything. The menu system sucks. The now, concept is awesome. It's an underwater yeah. so uh, underwater mirrorless camera where the lenses come off. Now I'm thinking, and they only have two lenses. For do this. you think they meant to make it easy to use just an auto settings because it's a underwater camera like who's gonna be look at this who's gonna be messing it's meant with for like joe who's gonna Somebody be messing who with the really settings shoot. when they're underwater on like vacation do you think well the, it, it i mean obviously you're you're different because, uh, I, absolutely yeah um so it, it's also shock proof what so size sensor is that it's 2.7 time crop factor oh wow it's smaller than one inch. so that's why the lens is what 11 to it's an 11 to 27 and a half what's that equal in 35 millimeter terms <sighs> times it by 2.7 2. 7, joe 11 times 2, so it's like, like a 30. 27 to something. Oh, okay. Or maybe they have the equivalent written on here. Do they? No. But it's waterproof to 49 feet, which is awesome. Wow. And you it's could interchangeable. That just blows my mind. So for doing video underwater, like it looked like shit because we didn't have a lot of light in a cave. Of course. We're in yeah. a cave. So that's not a great thing. In auto mode, taking the po photo I did of him out there in, during the light was great. Underwater, you need really crystal clear water. You have crystal clear water. It's probably great. It's great autofocus. Like the I think function, that's pictures in any water too, just clear water. You in know? photo, you know, in the photo modes, it's super cool. Like you get really cool photos. You're taking this thing underwater with you. You're zooming. It does audio too under there. Um, 
I'm just ripping on the fact that I have no manual controls. Of course, yeah. Quality of, the, of that picture I put up for of Drew, I put the raw file up. It looks, it looks good. looks great, yeah. So, and personally, up. I like that in color, by the way. I know that was a big discussion this past week. I like it in color as yeah. well. I love but, the contrast of the black and white, but at the same time, I think the color really tells the story. Before let, before I get back into the Mexico talk, let's and get into the, to the pluggy McPluggerson. Yeah. It's, uh, d- does, does anybody hear that? Do you, do you hear what? that, Todd? What? Jackhammering what? outside? What? I think it is jackhammering. What? Oh, oh, Are those sleigh bells? Oh. Are they ringing? Are they jingle dingle? Like jingle ringle dingle? Saint Google Nick. It? Okay, so here here's Rhodes' thing. They're they're uh, Santa's coming. <gasps> they're, they're, they're okay. Get this. Road has a new partnership to announce. Okay. With with Santa. Santa. <gasps> Road has partnered. Shut your mouth. No, it's true. Shut your mouth. So his sack's going to be full of road goodies? His sack is full of plenty of things that he <laughs> can do. Road has partnered with Santa for a five five days of giveaways this week. Monday, ho, ho, ho. Monday the 14th, that was good, to Friday the 18th, Road will be giving away an audio prize pack every day. Ooh. To get involved and for a chance to win, just visit Road, R O D E dot c o m slash santa s a n t a or visit Rhodes Facebook or Twitter channels. Santa, we have any more sound effects for Santa? That's all we got for Santa. There's Christmas tree song for you. Can we sing? Oh like Christmas tree, version? oh Christmas tree, how I love ho, ho, thee. Ho. Thank you, Fro, <laughs> for inviting me to the headquarters. Dear Santa, I see you have an elf like I do, a tiny little man in the I corner. I want a pink bike for Christmas. Who's the tiny man in the corner? It's Joe. <laughs> elf on the shelf. I also don't give him a fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Santa. Santa, I heard that uh, you got a letter from a guy named Joe who wanted a microphone. <laughs> I, oh, 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 oh. I'm going to fill his sock with a bunch of go fuck yourself. <laughs> What's also funny is I have a lot of sweaty elves in my at the North Pole, which is weird because it's so cold. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, such a dick. Yeah, that, that's um, so. Road is doing this. Go, you know. First off, happy Hanukkah to anybody who's a a, a Jew in the world. What are you talking about? Shut up, Sam. <laughs> what nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> You're not the only one with a religion, <laughs> a party to uh, have. Uh, let me get back to you. Eat your gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. What is this candelabra on the table? <laughs> the candelabra. Uh, when I was in Mexico on the streets, they had two menorahs, two big menorahs lit. Oh, yeah? There are Mexican Jews. But anyway, back to Road. Monday the 14th to Friday the 18th, go to road.com slash Santa or visit their uh, Facebook page or Twitter channels because you don't have to be uh, into Santa to win. You could be a Jew a Christian. But feel free to get into me. A Muslim, I'm into that. a Hindu, an other. If you fit any of those other. categories, <laughs> if you fit any of those categories, Kwanzaa, you're entered to win. Holi- just random holiday parties. Anything. Winter celebrations. Thank you, Santa. How was your gluten-free uh, cookie and your soy milk? It tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Santa, time for you to get up the chimney and get out of here. All right, Merry Christmas, everybody. No, we say Happy Holidays. We can't say Merry Christmas. Stop being, stop being a hater. <laughs> Screw you, Joe. <laughs> no wow, that was crazy. He can you, came. Can you believe Santa was on the show? <laughs> That's amazing. I can't believe that uh, Road was able to get Santa on this show. Incredible. Wow. Thank you, Road. You Connections, guys, man. Unbelievable. Jeez, Joe, good luck this year. <laughs> Joe's like, you're getting dick. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a lump of coal, he's getting a Doc Johnson. Oh, <laughs> a black no. Doc Johnson. I would hope so. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Road. Road will be officially no longer sponsoring this show any longer because they don't. Uh, uh, by the way, Road wants us to come to Australia. Do they next year? Oi! Well, we've got Atomos in Australia too. We could do both because yeah. Road wants to continue their sponsorship of the show because they've been happy with it. Because people like you. By the way, I've been carrying the Road uh, video mic me with me. I took it to we used Mexico. It today. Yeah, we used I, it this today. morning. I showed it to my buddy uh, Drew from Fit Life. Dot TV. Your new boyfriend. Yeah, my new Joe. boyfriend. He's ripped. Look at this picture. He's oh, I know. ripped. I know. What's he his name? Drew? Drew. Cannoli. Drew. Gotcha. Drew Cannoli. Cannoli. Don't mess from with new Drew York. Cannoli. 
Don't mess with him. Hey, Drew Canola. He ordered one of these from Mexico on Amazon because he saw me it's using it. probably cheaper in Mexico. <laughs> no, it oh. wasn't cheaper. Oh. But money, money does go a long street. way. I, I do want to say, though, the people there, unbelievable people, so nice, work their ass off, asses off. I can, I can see why they come to the United States to can work. Can we bring somebody and replace Joe? <laughs> 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 yeah, Jose. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I got Jose here. Hey, I'll work for you under the table. All right, hey, let's stop while we're ahead. Let's stop <laughs> while we're ahead. Anyway, I can understand why they come here to work their asses off and take whatever money they can get because it goes a long way back In Mexico, home. yeah. I, sure. I know, it's amazing. What's the dollar you go worth work there? at the Trump it's, Tower? It's and... 17 to 18 pesos to every dollar. Okay. So 18 pesos. It's not a lot of money. Yeah. So I gave a guy a five dollar bill to watch our rental car over the night. And he, he was blew a, you. He was <laughs> he did offer, but he um he looked at he looked at me and his eyes just rang out with like Oh my god, because who knows what he was getting paid to sit there overnight to watch this construction site. That's true, yeah. He's like, I'll watch the car. He said it in Spanish and my guy with me basically uh knew what he said, yeah. Knew what he said, but so we did stuff like that. That's what you think he said. <laughs> so the Mexico I'll steal trip. steal your car when you leave. The Mexico trip was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went as a vacation. It was part of ClickBank. Was doing this ClickBank University for some people, educating new people who want to get into selling stuff online. Did you actually attend any of those? Events? I didn't attend any of that. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Hung out with Drew and his crew. He's got this thing called Organifi, which is a green drink, all organic, all gluten free, and, and it's a green drink to help you do something. Did you drink it? Did try it? I did try it. I actually did try it. Was it good? It didn't taste terrible. It didn't have it. So it wasn't good. It wasn't the greatest flavor. <laughs> no, it's not the greatest taste ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't have Expected. a terrible. It didn't have a terrible aftertaste at all. That's good. So it for a green drink. Because they're usually tough to drink. Exactly. Yeah, my dad used to do it. Used to do it, and he just can't do it anymore. So anyway, check them out. Um, I what I loved about it was yes, it was mostly a vacation. But hanging out and just talking about business with each other, they were asking me questions about what I do. I was asking questions about how they do certain things. And so we just basically now have open lines of communication to help each other in business. I think like the first text I got from you when you were back, you're like, I have a lot of ideas. Let's talk. Of course, yeah. the first text we got was, why did I come here? I did that on purpose. <laughs> You're right. I did that, was, I that, did that, that on was purpose. That was while you were there, yeah. First, let me talk about the Hard Rock uh, all-inclusive there. I'll never go to an all-inclusive again unless it's an expensive one. Hard Rock... Because of the food? The, the food. The food was the, it was garbage. It was garbage-ass to food. To you or... No. It was garbage. To actual garbage. Well, to, to, the, to, the, you know, to Meredith, the drone guy, he would love the food because it's all you can drink and all you can eat. So he would be there... And he could watch his daughter. God in- damn it, don't you be talking about me and them Mexicans. I got Donald Trump on my side now, boy. Putting up that wall. You know wall. what I mean? I'm putting up that goddamn wall. <laughs> Keep them drones out. Keep them Mexicans out. <laughs> so the food's horrible. The staff was awesome. That's the, good. The rooms were great. There was in the room. I found this. Like Everything's all included in the room. <laughs> you open up. You open up the refrigerator thing, but next to it, there's this pull-out Tequila. cabinet. When you pull out the cabinet, there are three bottles of liquor upside <gasps> down with spouts for shots. Dude, we would have been dead. Oh, my God. We would have been dead Unlimited the first shots. Hour. Unlimited. You didn't touch it, did you? I didn't touch it at yeah. all. Wow. Uh, is it in focus, Stephen? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Everything's fine. It's fucking it's fine. fine. So anyway, that's that's enough about that that place. But uh, Todd, I did get recognized by three people the first night at the hotel that were local Mexicans who came to photograph a band there. They were like, "Oh my god, I need to get your picture." So I just want to let you just know. what you need. You love just that. what you need. Yeah, I'm in Mexico and they recognize. If anyone ever sees Jared on the streets, be sure to say hi. Because did they get any pictures it. of you and your new boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Todd. Right. Uh, um, so. How about that outfit you were wearing, by the way? I wore the pink bathing suit. Oh, yeah. So when I walked Is around. when you were with your boyfriend? When we went around, I wore the pink <laughs> bathing suit, a, a, the purple top or the green hmm. top, and I wore my boots. Huh. And your boots. I took sandals, but I'm it was surprised so- you wanted to draw attention to yourself. <laughs> It's crazy. But you didn't have your hair up, did you, the whole time? Well, no, because once I got it wet and in the pool, I just left it down the entire oh, yeah. trip. Nice you looked like a motherfucking ice cube. I did. I looked like Easy E. <laughs> you did. Easy E. Jerry curls and all. Uh, yeah, so we did that. And so then the last thing I'll say about Mexico, uh, we went to Cheats and Itza. It's a Mayan temp, Mayan ruins. It's where the Mayan temple is. Oh, it's uh, in Amsterdam, right? Yeah, it's in Amsterdam. <laughs> it's a three hour drive. Yeah. Okay. So we rent a car, shitty little Hyundai 
car for like mm-hmm. 50 bucks nice and josh the guy that he works at clickbank he wanted to take this excursion so we stayed outside the, the resort in uh, playa del marta or whatever the hell it's called uh which is another touristy town but it was really nice we stayed in airbnb they don't um, do uber down there right they didn't have uber that's what i figured um so we, we were like, let's go to Chichen Itza. And so there were two options. You could take like the three-hour drive or the two-hour drive. The two-hour drive takes you over their turnpike, which is like $30 to ride the turnpike. Wow. Or something along those lines. Maybe it was like 20 bucks to take it. Still, that's So we're on wow. our way. Pesos or dollars? It's 300 pesos. Jeez equal to about $20. It was like 20 bucks. Wow. So we're, we, we start to leave town. We have no GPS. We have no connection or anything. He's driving. I think it's 60 miles per hour kilometers per hour and he's going i guess 80 kilometers an hour and all of a sudden he's like oh shit we've got flashing lights in the mirror in the rear view we're getting pulled over by a federale all right so we're we're getting pulled over the guy walks up damn hippies with your long hair curly shit you son bitchin goddamn hippie afro motherfucker no, he didn't have his afro up at the time. I didn't have my afro up. <laughs> you Jerry Curl, son bitch. Oh, man. Is that how the Mexican guy spoke in Spanish? Sounds just All like police him. officers sound like this. <laughs> so he comes up. It's the up. safest way for me to make fun of people. <laughs> so he comes up. Touché. And the guy I'm with, Josh, he knows Spanish. He's, he fluently speaks Spanish. And the guy's like, nice. Ask for his license. Lucky for you. And he gives him it to him. He's like, I shouldn't have given him the license because now they can hold on to it. So I'm sitting there going, what, what's going to happen? Yeah, but what are you going to do? I'm afraid of being out of out and about in Mexico anyway. Yeah. So the guy, you know, they start talking Spanish. I, Josh's inflection is changing. You know, he's just being all like, I'm like, oh, Jesus, what's going on? What are they saying? Because I don't understand a word they're saying. And then he goes into his wallet, pulls out 500 pesos, hands it to the guy, gets his license back, and we go on our way. What? So I asked him, what happened? And he goes, well, I shouldn't have given my license in the first place because now he has it and then I'm on the hook for whatever. He said that the cop said that, so what's going to happen is you can go on your way without your license, but you have to come back and get it later. It's going to cost you 750 to 1,000 pesos what? to get it back. And Josh goes, all right, um, so what would it cost for you to just let us go on our way? He asked that. Imagine what the guy would have said if he was legitimate and was like, are you bribing me? And Seriously. And ripped out of the car yeah, and federales a, are like a big risk. butt searching you and stuff. Oh my God! Yeah, I might not have been you so would love bad. that. I was I mean, worried. No. He's like, so he said five hundred pesos, and we did. And I'm sure the Mexicans that are watching will be like, well, that's too much. You should have paid a hundred to two hundred, which wow. is what the locals told us after it. But we just went on our way anyway. So that's the side story about how I almost which ended up. Which is how up. many dollars? It's, it was like thirty bucks. Jeez, but yeah, thirty. I'm nervous talking about it now. Thirty bucks to go on your way, help. Why, why would he even take his license though in the first place? Well, he just wanted to see where he was from, who he was. But I mean, why would he have him pick it up? Is there a legit reason why I, he would do that? Or no, is he just... it's Mexico. Anything okay. goes. That's okay. crazy. Whatever the federales say. Wow. Mm. So we, we go on our way. It's like another two hour drive. Literally saw three cars. Nobody is on this turnpike. If you break down or something, you're freaking screwed. Wow. You can't call AAA. No. You get to Chichen Itza. We hire a tour guide with... There were three other people. They're like, well, if you do a group, it's cheaper. It's ten bu- $10 a person to have a professional tour guide there was a guy from south korea and then two buddies that he was with that we toured with those two so it was only five of us we're going through i try to take pictures i take my lens out fogs right up Mm. so just had to and i have a picture of that too well they always say like bring a bag or something well the the way that you keep it from fogging is we were in the air-conditioned car you just leave your bag open you take the lenses off you take the back caps off and you have to let it equalize with everything else i mean what i did is take my lens cloth and i did get rid of the condensation and it helped it go quicker i needed to do it to the back also i got some pictures i didn't get the front i wish i could shoot the new 24 to 70 say at 50 50 millimeters but i couldn't from further back because there were so many tourists And Mm. I was there more with the mentality that I wanted to get a couple pictures, but I was there to learn as well. Yeah, and just enjoy yourself. Really cool things. Just all of the facts about the temple saying that it's like 364 steps high one day for every year. Oh, wow. And then all of the months Mm. and all of this stuff and how at the perfect time on May, what's it? May 21st or whatever at 4.35 in the afternoon the light hits it such a way that there's this thing that looks like a snake and at the bottom is the snake's head and it, it, the way that it is does is that why it, they said the world would end May 21st or whatever it was whatever. something like that the Mayans okay. but we also saw the so that temple was amazing you can't walk up to the top anymore 
because uh, five people died eight years ago falling down it. Oh, because geez. the steps wow. just go like this, just and steep? they're smaller. Yeah. Wow. So the tour guide was telling us about, we went over to the other temple where they did the sacrifices, where they ripped open the people's uh, nice. rib cages and ripped their hearts out. The people that they like, chose uh, to kill. Tomb Raider? No, not Tomb Raider. The uh, Raiders That's of the Lost Ark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, what they did is they would take... It was. I don't want to get into the whole story. You can look it up yourself. But one of the things they would do is drug the person that they were going to sacrifice. Mm. And usually it was one, like of, college. one of the warriors. <laughs> they would give them peyote. Is that, is that their hazing? Well, they would give them peyote so they were hallucinating so they wouldn't feel pain or scream. And then oh. the high priest's people would basically tell the people, look, they're strong. But they basically lied to them and they yeah. drugged them. And then they killed them. But at the bottom, there's all these portraits of each person that was uh, sacrificed. Huh. Etched into the stone. Wow. Then they have the sport Did they arena. Crop? Did they crop? Yes. Then in the sports arena, they have the sport where the, they have baskets hanging on the wall, but there are circles like this. It's kind of like basketball. Think of Quidditch. It's like Quidditch. Oh, Harry and so Potter. they go around with these brooms and these they rubber fly balls. They're doing this. Rubber balls lit on fire. They have to knock through that, and then the winners, the the winners captain would get his head cut off at the end. Oh, the winner. Wait, yeah. The, why winners the winner? captain? The winners the captain. Winner because lose? that that was seen as an honor. Dying? Pick, yes. I'd be like, do not make that shot, asshole. <laughs> do not make lose. that shot. So anyway, paid the guy, gave him an extra extra couple bucks. It was twenty. We gave him twenty five bucks instead of twenty bucks for the two of us, and we just went on our way. And then we took back roads home. We didn't get on the turnpike because we couldn't find it. So we took the long way. And we went through some of these authentic, and we're talking real deal Mexican cities that I would love to have gotten out and taken pictures, but I didn't want to because we didn't have a local with us. If we had a local that could be the intermediary of course you had those yeah. old stores with coca-cola signs and an old mexican sitting in front of it it just i saw that we all saw that's the like pictures. uh israel you have that picture of that guy near the coca-cola sign right similar stuff yeah it was just pretty cool so let me ask you uh how did you take the picture did you just lay your camera on the ground of or what? of the actual pyramid or oh, i handheld everything you handheld. I it. used the fourteen to twenty four and the twenty four to seventy. The twenty four to seventy had the. Oh, you didn't do a long exposure. I didn't know if you were trying to get rid no. of people in the frame. No, no, or... no, no, no. I could have done that. Gotcha. But the, I didn't have a tripod or anything. The eighty two millimeter Hoya HD three circular polarizer is what I used for some of the twenty four to seventy shots. That's what I wanted to ask though about the tripod. Can you just bring a tripod, yeah. or do you need like oh, a yeah. permit? Or... It's Mexico. It's whatever. It's Mexico. If you give somebody some pesos, they don't give a shit what you do. <laughs> nice. Money talks. There you go. Money talks. And the last thing is when we were driving back. We stop at a gas station to fill up for gas, uh, and I go to take a go to the bathroom. And mind you, we're in the middle of a jungle anyway. And the guy, it's are you locked. Jared Polin? It's no, it's locked. And he comes out. He goes five pesos. Wait, he's like five pesos. I'm like to pee. And then I thought about it. I'm like five pesos. Wait, you're Easy E. That's like that's like you know like the six cents or something. I'm like okay, here's five pesos, and I peed and stuff. But I could have gone and peed in the trees, but I was just like, it's five pesos. Wow. And so that's I would have pissed on him. <laughs> and so that's the story of Mexico. It's a long story. Huh. I know. I'm sorry for the long story. I hope there was good information. I know I went really far into that. No, that's fine. I'm glad I'm glad you went away. Yeah. I did. I did it I, feel good. It felt good to be there. I did some work. I made a video while I was there and uploaded it, as you know. Um So how was their internet? Okay, I guess. Internet was all right. It was all right. Yeah, it was fast for downloads. Uh, upload, a little I mean. slower for uploads. Yeah. But I was able to upload the 105 megabytes pretty quick. It's wasn't not bad. bad. Yeah. Uh, so Wi-Fi was everywhere in the in the resort. Cool. Um, so that now was the resort more like American run or how was that? Well, it's Americanized. When I got there, none of the restaurants were open. They're like, but we have snacks at the pool: hamburgers, hot dogs, and French yes. fries. My I'm like, kind of meal. Yes. Like, Can I get some real food, please? Give me some of those booze in the hotel room and. Go down there. I'm good to go. Right now. Um, so no, it, it was good. I felt relaxed. Felt like I was able to focus on stuff. So I think that we should travel more and take trips to focus on. Well, so not with each other, right? We, not with each other. We, I'm super good with that. <laughs> we travel a lot. It's the fact that we never have like an off day to do to just enjoy right. it. So what I've we been never thinking get to do that. is that if we spend two days filming, we spend two days at the end relaxing. I mean, that would be great stuff. You know, I'm all about well, that. I'm saying if we want to make more quick tips or we want to go and focus on a specific, maybe I want to make more video guides yeah, man. that are smaller and more consumable at less expensive prices. We could go somewhere. We could do a raw talk. Todd could leave and fly home because he needs to feed Morgan. Um, and exactly. we, we can just do what we need to do. So those are just some of the ideas I was going with. Works for me. I do think mobile raw talk next year is, is definitely... 
Well, we haven't done one in a while. Mobile Raw Talk and well, we still need to do one in Philly. Mobile Raw Talk and six episodes for of the TV show. So when we do the TV show, we leave spots to yep. do Raw Talks. I I, I, I honestly true. think we could have like a quarterly local Raw. Uh, live we, Raw Talk. We just need to find a good location and we to could do, do it at. We could do, um, Actually, we haven't done one with Todd yet, have we? A mobile no. Raw Talk? That's, That's going to be, be a total shit show. Yeah. I think the first one we do should be local because it's easier. Yeah, we've got we've to pack more bags this time. I'm going to get hammered. I'm going to hammered. I'm going to pass out. <laughs> That's the goal. Okay, so why don't we get into photo news? Oh, yeah. I've got a bunch of other stuff to talk about, so we're skipping okay. flying solo this week so that we have all this other stuff to talk about because I want to talk about this lab, this photo lab discussion I got into. Should I do it now? Sure, why not? So I follow this photo lab that's local to Fishtown. I won't give out their name. They're more of an indie photo lab type place. And so they post stuff on Instagram. And they posted this photo. Uh, let, me pull, let me pull up. Can I show it? I mean, sure. it's posted live. So here it is. They posted this photo. And it's during when the Pope was here, the, the <laughs> Benjamin Franklin Bridge was open to pedestrians. And it's blue. The, and name, so he, the name is on the post, by the way. I know. That's yeah. what I was looking at, So too. when you... When you read what they're talking about, it says they put the person's name who took it with this awesome cross process 35 millimeter shot extra illustrating why the Ben uh, should be a pedestrian paradise more often. That would be nice. It would be nice to walk mm -hmm. across it. But they said it's an awesome 35 millimeter cross process shot. But I look at the image and I go, wait a second. This looks just like it was shot regularly with a 35 millimeter film. Film, yeah. So cross and and so. So I left a comment and I said, uh, I said, that doesn't look cross-processed in the least. So then they commented back and they said, it's all in the scan corrections. I'm like, scan corrections? It's cross-processed. Why aren't you showing the cross-processed? So what? if you don't know what cross-processed it is, it means you shot slide film but processed it in C41 chemicals instead of E6. E6 is what you process slide film in and C41 is regular film. So when you cross process it, you get these colors freaky get colors. All out of whack. It also can mess with the chemicals too. That's why they didn't do a lot of it in the past when yep. you went to labs because it messed with the chemicals. Pretty much wasting them. Right. So you get these weird colors like maybe where you had blues, you would have greens or magentas or something. But this kind of I, I, the reason I called this out is because it defeats the whole purpose. If you were going to shoot photos cross processed, and this is what my my issues are with people that sh shoot film and tell you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and they're all about being authentic and being unique about the old way of shooting. Well, the old way of shooting was you shot it, and that's how you kept it. You didn't convert it back to this other thing. So then they responded back with. Cool story, oh, the bro. The response was the best. <laughs> they, they were. Um, I had a good laugh at that. They responded back, it's all in the scan correction. So I said to them, that makes no sense whatsoever. Why would someone shoot slide film, process it in C41, only to scan it and convert it back to, uh, back as if it wasn't cross-processed? Makes no sense whatsoever. Wait, you got to read it in the Jared Poland voice. Why would someone do that? And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> their response, bingo. Wow, dude, <laughs> at Jared Poland. What an odd response. Thanks for the input, exclamation point. <laughs> cool story, bro. Fuck you guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. F-bombs being dropped. Yeah, but seriously, earmuffs, that was their response. I mean, uh, legitimately, if you're going to be one of these people, one of these hipster kids or adults that go out and shoot film and say that you're a traditionalist or you're doing it the way that it used to be done, well, then don't go home. It's okay to scan it because you need to share it. You want to share it. You need to but show don't it off, start yeah. making all these color corrections and all these things because now you're just changing what the film purpose was in the first place. It's like a DJ that's never touched vinyl. That's what I have to say about that. Let's get into photo news Photo News Music is brought to you by audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. What are we doing? We're doing some Mexican siesta. <laughs> and by the way, I got authentic tacos while I was there. How were they? Loco Pez is better. Really? They were really good. Well, that's because they're Americanized tacos that you're used no, to. No, no. We were in... No, I'm saying Loco Pez is. Oh, the no. Local Loco taco Pez is here. exactly like theirs. Really? Theirs was really good. No, it, it was really good in Mexico. We went to this place. It was called Guacamole's. Two of us had breakfast. Did they have guacamole? They did. Two mm. and Pico. Two of us had breakfast, and it cost us 137 pesos for two people. That's about eight or nine dollars. I left. We left 170 pesos. So the guy got a nice Ballin'. little tip. I bet you Taco uh, Bell Becky would have loved that place. Hello. <laughs> 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 Hello? <laughs> Did you guys run for the border? I'm 
was there last night. It's crazy. I was there. I took a picture too. And somebody came out and said, you can't take a picture. You have to give me 55 pesos. I said, I don't know what that is. I have picante sauce. <laughs> So instead, I gave my handy behind the dumpster. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Uh, um, uh, the tacos were re- the food that was really good. Outside cool. of the compound, yeah, the yeah. authentic stuff was cool. Nice, nice. All right, so this music is brought to you by audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. Now let's get into the Mexican siesta music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into that photo news. Uh, we've got <clears throat> phase one. They've officially acquired the other medium format giant, Mamiya. Now, the acquisition includes the takeover of their medium format factories Mamiya. in Japan as well. Uh, phase one vice president, Niels V. Nudson, says, Phase one is now the only medium format camera company Hello. that has... I'm f- Niels Van Miel Nielsen, and I've taken over this company because I am amazing. Uh, that has full internal control of all critical components in a world-class imaging system. This is the best news in many years for quality-focused photographers and imaging companies as Phase 1 works to consistently raise the bar in medium format photography. Now, Phase 1 is forming a... Raising up into the streets (laughs) Winning by for the fire (laughs) Catching up Running around Cause I got the eye of the tiger Phase one is forming Phase One Japan as phase part two. of part of this I'm deal as well. Exactly. They should be Phase Two or Phase Three and a Half. And they're taking over Mia's website as well. Uh, and if you didn't see this coming, remember Phase One became a forty-five percent owner of Mamiya Digital back in two thousand nine. So that'll be pretty big. Uh, and then speaking of Phase 1, they've released the next version of Capture One Pro with Capture One Pro 9. Uh, new features include El Capitan compatibility, a new processing engine, new software retouching abilities, a uh, new contrast engine to improve skin tones, a new keywording library tool to make archiving easier. What's up? Breaking news. This just in. Uh, what's this called? Capture 9? Capture One Pro 9. Capture One Pro 9 just came out with a new, fi- uh, a new option that fixes your photos when you shoot them at 12,800. <gasps> you need to get all on that time. Uh, they could fix my freaking hard drives at my house. <laughs> they've got an updated color editing interface, a new feature in the tethered camera window as well, which now shows the camera's battery status. Uh, I know Richie talked to us about that. He said he loves that feature. And you also now get three activation codes versus the previous two. So they say you can activate your desktop, laptop, and, and your backup device. laptop as oh, well. Oh, sure. And did Richie write an article? I don't know if he did yet. Probably by the time this comes out, if he did, I'm, I'll link it over on the website. Yeah. But as nice. of right now, this recording, he hasn't. Uh, and price-wise, an upgrade will cost 99 bucks if upgrading from version 7 or 8. And new, us- new users will be charged $299. And you can see a preview video of all the Nine. new features in action over on the website if you're interested in that. Uh, next up, there's a new Kickstarter that helps you practice newborn photography. It's called Stand In Baby, which is just that. It's a fake looking baby doll. Keep Jared from really Subway weird. away. Uh, now, the it's silicone like the skinned doll. dummy. It's like my real doll. <laughs> is realistic. I pose her as well. It's weird. <laughs> it's super realistic looking, though, in terms of like size, weight, and joint movement. So you can pose it any way you would pose an actual baby. I think we need to order one, actually. Dude, it's expensive. How much? I'll, how I'll would, get to how that in a minute. How many from Subway pose that? How many maybe? pesos? A lot of pesos. Um, but it'll also hold the pose, too, if you form it in whatever way you want. Uh, it's 20 inches long and weighs 7 pounds, just like a regular baby. That's a big baby. And it's being called the world's first fully articulated newborn photography posing and training aid. It's cool. Now, co-founder Sandra Moffitt says it's a safety product at heart. Uh, She says, like many other professionals within the industry, I hate the thought of novice photographers learning and practicing on real babies. Twisting heads. (laughs) Turn your head this way. (laughs) Right there. Uh, Now, she says, I believe skills should first be undertaken on a training aid of similar weight, size, and range of movements to a newborn. You don't need any training with a newborn. (laughs) Mine was my first one. She turned out fine. (laughs) Only dropped her a few times. She says, uh, now, before photographers apply these methods to real babies. Uh, now, a pledge of $613 what? 
And this is the early bird special. That costs as much as a baby. We'll get you a stand-in baby on their due date of July 2016 if the camp if the campaign is successful. How many douchebags have paid for this? Uh, it's actually I could all go the, buy some crackheads baby for less than that. All the early bird specials have sold okay, out. Okay, I don't I didn't mean to call you people douchebags. I'm kidding. This is a great thing. That's really expensive. It is a good idea. Uh, wait I a just second. think it's a little too expensive. I could just go to I could go to Toys R Us. And I could get I could get a yeah. cabbage patch doll. Yeah, but their thing was that this actually has ball joints and it will move it, just like it a baby. It looks really good. And the silicon skin will actually hold its movement and everything, the poses. So maybe I should buy it anyway. Does it wipe off? What? Is it easy to clean? Yeah, it has it has silicon. <laughs> asking. It is has, it easy to clean? I guess, yeah. Okay, I know I what he's asking. getting at. What, how, so how many people have pledged? Uh, a lot of people pledged now out of their $128,374 goal. They've already raised over $88,000 at the time of this recording wow. with another three weeks to go. Wow. Uh, and you can check out their Kickstarter video. It's over on the site. It's uh, this girl, Sandra Moffat, and I think her husband who started it. Um, and they also have a gif of the baby's possible poses and the ball joint movements a and GIF? stuff. Yeah. Like a GIF. peanut butter? Like the peanut butter. So, you mean a gif? A gif. It's, Apparently it's pronounced gif. Yeah. But that's what the founder GIF. said. So, uh, you know, I, when I called you people douchebags... Not really calling you a douchebag. Uh, you kind of were. I think we should probably order one. Now, now they no. said, I, I forget the actual percentage. Well, for, making, <sighs> for making educational videos, That's Todd. just frightening. They said uh, the actual percentage off, like I think they said if you order the early bird, the early bird, it's like 40% off what the MSRP is going to be. So saying it's a so thousand bucks. Like is it going to look bucks. real? Like real, real? It looks it great. Does, it doesn't look real, real. It has but it, ball But from a stuff, distance, but, will it look real? Yeah, but when I saw the it's photos... It's more about the posing. It's not like, really about could it Could I put it in real. a baby seat and then like mess with people and leave like the baby seat on the top of my roof and pull on, it off? Actually, yes. yes, it would. If you put clothes on The it. poses, when I saw this, I was like... That looks like an actual baby. Well, it has the silicon like skin, too. So. That's what he was asking. If it has real skin. I said silicon skin. Well, that's like mm. on his real doll. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No. She wipes down easy. Oh, God. Oh, you know yeah. who's bought most uh, of these? And it comes in two skin co- tone colors, too. Caucasian or African American. Wait. But, but you know what? It should come with an extra skin to take one off. Because I should have to spend $1,200 to get both. It's expensive, man. They should come with an extra skin. You should well, be able it's to- expensive. Ask ask Angelina Jolie and, and Brad Pitt. It's expensive to buy every color. It does look amazing. It does. I've, it's a great idea. I really would consider is. buying it to make educational videos. And I love the safety factor. You I, know, I don't want to see you with a child. <laughs> the point they're bringing up, though, that you know this is a, more of a safety issue than actually learning newborn photography. Sure. Yeah, because you can still suck as a photographer. You just don't want to break the kid's back exactly. or head. Exactly, yeah. Because they're very... Well, like, you're not going to manhandle a child as a photographer, are you? Yeah, but if Meredith was taking photos of a baby, you know what that would sound like? Yeah, but dude, when, when you're posing a newborn, you're like posing you have to it in very them. odd... You have to pose them? I don't remember. They don't yeah. move. They, they can't control their muscles. Yeah, so well, you I, have to I, pose I, them I, and you're I like moving them around. That. It's really odd. God, but, don't you know how babies work? <laughs> I mean, I, we used to just sit her, sit her up and be like, yep, yeah, there she is, boom. But, all right. But that's because you're... But the parents should be moving the kids, I guess. I don't know. They should. Well, mm. all right, let's go. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, we've got photographer Don Kamarechka has revealed a new com- composited photo called the Snowflake, which features all of the, these like extreme macro photos he's taken of snowflakes over the years, totaling up to 2,500 hours of work across five years. Sleigh bells will be ringing. Jing, 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 Ooh, it's almost time for Love Actually and Kira Knightley. You love them. Oh, I love Kira Knightley. You do. Oh, my God. She's, oh, my God. You know who's in Love Actually? Kira Knightley. Rick Grimes. Did you realize Shut that? your face. He's in there. Shut your face. Who's so Rick? weird? Rick Grimes who's ain't in no Walking goddamn Dead. Who's Love Rick Actually. Grimes? Walking Dead. It's so weird. Shut your face. Uh, anyway, we have... Uh, in the composite, there's over 400 unique snowflakes pictures pictured, uh, all accurately scaled, so they are all in relative size to each other as well. Now, to make just a single snowflake image, he would take, an a- on average, about 40 separate images and then combine them in post, basically focus stack them, uh, so the crystals are all in focus tip to tip. Now, he had to stack them since he took them on an angle. He says that approach <laughs> follow- allows for reflected light to hit the surface of the crystal and bounce back into the camera lens brightly. Now, if the snowflake was photographed straight on, the angle would require the light source to be coming from the inside the lens itself. When they're tip to tip. I was waiting for that. As I'm <laughs> we, writing that, I'm like, you know yep, what they call that, right? They're going to say that. What do they call that? Pig roast. You and your boyfriend. <laughs> this is just snowflakes we're this talking about. This is a, a composited, crazy composited snowflake poster. How does he take pictures of them without a melt? 
Like they're on a on the ground or are they He already took four hundred separate snowflakes pictures over the years, over the course of five years. And now he's making this giant poster and compositing all them to one big poster. Wow. And like I said, each picture alone is about forty composited images. Huh. So it's a huge, huge working file that wow. he's dealing with. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Sounds now like it's as big as the editing guide. <laughs> now that final composite is now available, like I said, as a poster print uh, on his website for about twenty bucks for a sixteen by twenty-four, or about thirty bucks for a twenty-four by thirty-six, well, that's which cheap. is really reasonable. Yeah, yeah. That's not a bad price. I actually think he could charge yeah. more. Um, and you can see the final composite over on the website, linked to the images and everything. Foronosphoto.com slash raw talk hyphen one six two. There you go. The U.S. government, this story's crazy, is looking for the next Ansel Adams. Uh, The National Park Service of the Department of the Interior is looking to hire a black and white large format photographer. Oh, I thought you were saying a black... The same job as the iconic photographer Ansel Adams. Now, the salary listed ranges from about $64,000 to $99,000. Phone call? Who's this? Ansel? No, Rutu. No, you have to be American. Yes, we don't. We don't like anybody coming into our country taking our jobs anymore. I'm sorry. Well, go fuck yourself too. All right, goodbye. I'm done with you. The job is based out of Washington D.C. and requires a lot of traveling. They say five to ten nights a month, which isn't terrible. Yeah, but look, if if you're getting hired. By the government, this is like a dream to job take an eight by ten, a bunch of people. full, you know, view, you know, a view camera like that, yeah, to go make these iconic images or remake. It's awesome. That is, a, yes, that's like grant money. You do it. Yep. And the job summary reads, in quotes, experience your America and build a fulfilling career by joining the National Park Service as we prepare for a second century of stewardship and engagement. Become a part of our mission to connect with our past and create important connections to the future by building a rich and lasting legacy for the next generation of park visitors, supporters, and advocates. Just make sure you don't cross-process your film (laughs) and then convert it back to regular after you scan it like a pretentious prick. Now, requirements include a U.S. citizenship... uh, uh, background and or security investigation, a valid state driver's license, and all and all those documents must be received by closing date. Wait, so I can't be an illegal alien and do you it? You cannot be. Uh, and they also list that you must have knowledge of the principles and techniques of large format, obviously. Well, obviously. Black and white photography, uh, knowledge of published standard, standards and guidelines for architectural, engineering, and landscape documentation, and knowledge of film in general. Any ISO limit. <laughs> now yeah, they 100. End they ended with, there is no substitution of education for specialized experience. I thought that was good to note. What does that mean? Uh, it's basically saying that if you're experienced, but you have no educated background of this, like you don't have a degree, it doesn't matter. It's your quality experience of work. tops that. Yeah. Oh, so they say, they're, they're, they're saying experience trumps all. Tops, yep, exactly. Copy that. Uh, now, the open period for the full-time gig is open until December 15th, and you can find a link to the listing over on the site, and by the time this comes out, you only have about two days to apply. Hurry up, Joe. If you're interested. Hurry up, Joe. <laughs> uh, moving forward, we have, there's a new spray that's designed specifically to give photographers and videographers professional haze in their shots. It's called Atmosphere Aerosol. Ah, uh, Atmosphere Oh, uh, my favorite Discovery Channel commercial in the history of Discovery Channel was when they have them hang for, for like Space Week or something, and they were just hanging in space, and they're wearing costumes, and they're like, ah, oh, atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> the cans are similar in size and shape to a spray paint canister as well, making it much easier, they say, to lug around than a typical fog machine. Now, they say it's much safer than any other aerosol can as well. They say hairspray cans, aerosol shaving cream cans, and other pressurized can products, such as Pam cooking spray, use propane and butane as a propellant. When atmosphere aerosol is sprayed, a small non-harmful amount of gas propels the spray and quickly dissipates, leaving the mineral oil in the air. So it's safe, non-toxic, and clear, they say. Is it flammable? Can it work as a lubricant? The ingredients include propane butane and mineral oil so Holy it's extremely shit. flammable so basically what you should do with this is hold a lighter and go <laughs> yeah pretty much uh now once sprayed you'll have a few minutes until the spray is completely dissipated in the air a single can will spray continuously for about five minutes they say and it's recommended that you spray for at least 20 seconds for good coverage what square footage though uh, so you'll get about 15 uses of a single can. I don't know. Huh. No idea. In the preview yeah. video, they just have a small corner where a model is. Is this and a it's Kickstarter? probably like a 10 by 10 thing. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. a Kickstarter. How much is it? 
uh, price wise, an eight ounce can will cost you about twelve dollars. So okay. it's not too expensive. No, it should be nice to have in your arsenal if you're a wedding th- photographer, yeah. baby photographer. Just don't spray it at the baby and light them on fire, and don't use candles either. <sighs> oh god! Oh. But you can see a preview video of it in action over on the website where they have the model and they're spraying it and stuff. And they actually have a video where they just hold the nozzle down for five minutes and let it run out completely, showing you how long it lasts. Longer than time. Hmm. <laughs> uh, iOS 9.2 uh. is now available for download and brings support for Apple's Lightning to USB camera adapter and SD adapter to your iPhone. Now, with this new function, you can now connect your camera directly to your iPhone and, in, and import photos instead of having to use a computer as the middleman. Now, once connected, your iPhone will open up its Photos app and allow you to choose which photos, JPEG or RAW, and videos, which is H.264 and MPEG-4 formats, you'd like to import. Now, both cables have been updated to work with the iPad Pro, too, so you're in luck. iPad Pro. And cost $29 each, so it's actually not... You mean the iPad Pro as well? Yeah, not two. Not the two. Because I was like, oh, Jared, you're screwed, man. (laughs) iPad Pro as well, or T-O-O-2. In addition. Um, but yeah, they cost $29 each, so it's actually not that expensive coming from Apple for once. Um, huh. now, these have also been around for the iPad for some time, but the big news here is that the iPhone can now do it. So you can now pretty much tether your camera and import directly into your phone. Huh. Or, like I said, an SD card adapter as well. That's cool. Yeah. You looking that up right now? Uh, I'm looking for the baby. What's it called again? Uh, stand-in baby, I believe. Real baby. Kickstarter. <laughs> Real baby. Good Real one, baby. Time. Now, on the analog end, a photographer named Lucas Fritz has created his own automatic film processor yeah, called the Film Yeah, Lucas Fritz. Yeah, yeah, Lucas Fritz. How can I help you? My name is Lucas Fritz. Yeah, I could drink some sh- Schnell. Oh, uh, no. I'm going to drink some Kolsch. Nine. Now, taking a year to invent, the automated processor handles everything from black and white 35 film to 5 by 7 inch color slides. Now, it contains several liquid compartments, including a 6 liter freshwater what tank. What did he do? He created an automated film processor. No shit. He calls shit. it the film mat It's really cool. Can it cross-process? It that probably the, that, can. That local indie lab can use it. Yep, yep. Um, but again, it contains those different compartments, uh, a six liter freshwater tank, a water bath, and three chemical compartments. Uh, there's a circular development tank for roll film two and a rectangular one for four by five and five by seven. Uh, now it has presets capable of remembering 50 different development processes and each process can involve up to three chemicals and 10 individual steps. So you can really fine tune this thing. I like chemicals. <laughs> now here's how it works. You simply insert a developing tank with your film into the machine via a spill-free coupling, pour in your chemicals and use the single push button on the front and voila. Now it'll heat up your bath to your desired temperature uh, which does like 0.1 increments as well. It pumps the solutions into the into and out of the tank, rinse out the tank with fresh water between steps, and agitates the film with air bubbles. Then used chemicals can be drained from nozzles in the back, and the machine will clean itself with its automatic fresh water cleaning system. Unlike this thing's Todd. like fully automated. Uh, Fritz says he currently doesn't plan on launching a crowdfunding campaign for this. He tells Petapixel, I have no plans for mass production yet, but I plan on manufacturing a few single machines on request for interested customers. Now, the price would be about $2,000. For a processor? It's not that bad. Does it process just the film? Film. And black and white color? Black and white 35 or 5x7 inch slides or 4x5 as well. Yeah, it does 4x5. Color slides, yep. Will he be selling the chemicals? I don't think he'll be selling the chemicals. He didn't mention that at all. Just the actual Ooh, that's unit. That's the upsell right there. Yeah. Yep. That's where they get you. Uh, and you can see a five-minute introductory video showing the processor off. It's over on the website. He goes around, shows everything, and actually goes through a whole roll of film. Really cool stuff. That does sound cool. What was the name of that baby thing again? Stand in Baby. I didn't find it. I think it's called Stand in Baby, unless I'm getting it wrong. Let me do it again. Stand in Baby. Yep. One word. Are you doing it one word? S T A N D I N. Yeah, you have a space between baby and in. Okay, well, I thought maybe it would be... Try that. There it is, right there. Oh my God, what a pose. He looks like he's having fun. Yeah, show it to the camera real quick. Ty, can you see that? <laughs> see all the ball joints and stuff? It is creepy, yeah. yeah. It's creepy looking. <laughs> but if you, it kind of looks like Pinocchio. <laughs> it does kind of. If you did put clothes on it, you could definitely pull off, like make it look like a real baby almost. Oh yeah, I would like to put Pranks it in like stuff. a car seat, leave it on the top of my hood. My, my Who did that, car, jackass? Then, did they do yeah. that? Probably. They left it on top of the car. Yeah, 194 backers, 88,000 pledged so far. Wow. 
Uh, you'll like this one. Twitter has announced that photos on timelines will no longer be cropped, but will show in the original aspect ratio, similar to the way like Instagram's recent update went. Uh, they <laughs> Joe, say, will you stop cracking your knees every time you go know, to reset it, the cameras? It, sound, it sounds like <laughs> th- there's like popcorn popping over in the corner here every time he bends his knees. <laughs> Joe, why are your knees crack so much? I have no idea. Get off your knees. What do you get pulled over by a federale? Jeez, Louise Christmas. <laughs> they say while Twitter began as oh, a he's all- trying to get a microphone from Santa. I know, right? Santa doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> yes, Santa does. He's equal opportunity and wears a rainbow when he flies around. Joe, hello. Get off your knees, son. I haven't done that since the 80s. <laughs> when they used to leave me blow instead of cookies. I used to have cocaine cookies. <laughs> That's how I powered through all my flights. <laughs> Unfortunately, I started eating all the Rubik's Cubes because I thought they were candy. Uh, okay, Stephen. They say, while Twitter began as an all-text platform, rich media has become essential to the experience. Some of the best moments on Twitter are when you see the world through someone else's eyes. Now, In your eyes. Your eyes. In your eyes. Your eyes. <laughs> see you in your... Your what is it? Eyes. The light, the heat, your eyes. Shut Isn't up, that? Steven. You don't sing. <laughs> I actually know the lyrics, dick. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> or back to photo news. Stop interrupting. <laughs> Seriously. They're also introducing larger, more beautiful multi-photo displays. So they'll pop up similar to like Facebook's photo albums on your timeline where some pics are like featured larger than the other. Kind of like a collage. Uh, And then moving on to the other social media platforms, this is both creepy and scary. A man used location data in women's Instagram and Facebook photos to steal their underwear. Was his name Todd Wolf? (laughs) I think it was Todd. How did did he do it exactly? (laughs) How'd you get caught? How did he do that exactly? I don't know. You tell us, Todd. How did Uh, he do it? How did you do it? um, This is crazy. Keep going. No, he used location data in... uh, I thought maybe he used scent. Instagram and Facebook posts. Uh, he found college students' photos, used their geotagged photos. Including Taco Bell Becky had her panties stolen. Do you oh want them back? God. <laughs> hello, this is the police station. We're hello? Looking, we're hello? Look, is this Taco Bell Becky? Yeah, hello. This is, I can't find my underwear. We found your underwear. Uh, okay, um, how do I how do I claim them? I can describe them for you. Please describe your underwear. They're oh, pink God. with lace on them, and they've got a beautiful brown stripe <laughs> down the back. Yep, and that's it. Smells it smells like picante sauce. Wait, I don't know what picante sauce smells like. Let me uh, take a look. It smells like a or dumpster. Or a sniff. Well, it's just like it. It might taste like beans. <laughs> <laughs> yep, these are yours. How would you like us to return them to you? In a burrito. <laughs> Uh, so again, he found the photos, used their geotag photos, and plotted the coordinates on a map and broke into their homes, again, to steal their underwear. <laughs> Unbelievable. Often while the women were home, too. Unbelievable. When they were home? They, they said in a lot of cases the women were home, yeah. Now, 44-year-old Arturo Galvin is behind the bur- burglaries. Oh, I'm glad which, they believe that name when I gave it to him. <laughs> which mostly happened in Fullerton, California. Uh, he's behind six bur- burglaries. Of those burglaries, items belonging to 24 victims have been identified, uh, dating back to October of 2015. Now, in addition to panties and bras, <laughs> Galvin is suspected of stealing framed photos of women. Uh, now, it does say he took valuables as well, like oh. computers, iPads, and TVs. I mean, so of it course, wasn't just it wasn't underwear. just panties. Yeah, but that, that was, was a bonus. bonus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was arrested last week, but, but has was he since wearing any of the panties while he got arrested? I don't think so. Uh, he was arrested, but he has since posted bail of two hundred thousand dollars and faces cha- uh, charges of burglary, receiving stolen property, and peeping and prowling. Wow. You've been charged with that before, right, Todd? Um, only times? in college. It's not allowed to talk about it. The police say Galvin's arrest serves as a cautionary tale for users of social media who post photos on Instagram and other internet sites. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Make sure you don't geotag your photos because. Shit like this can happen. Well, you're home, yeah. Yeah. Uh, On the opposite end, a new parody video by the Mystery Hour introduces a support group for what they're calling Instagram Husbands. Uh, the video explains how husbands there you suffer. Go, Jared. <laughs> Look, I'll go on that site for a date. <laughs> well, so, okay, since you bring up dating apps, <laughs> I had a note here to talk about a new dating app that I just discovered while in Mexico. It's called Federalis. Next called, swipe. No, it's called Bumble. 
Bumble. I believe it's called Bumble. Bumble B tuna. So much better than Twitter. You, I mean, uh, Twitter, Tinder, and J Swipe. Why? Do you want to know how it works? Because they like you. No. The only way the communication can happen is if the girl communicates with you first. Oh, there's another app like that. Oh. You so. swipe. You swipe right to like it's them. It's called That's not real new, life. Yeah. It's called real life. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they swipe right, also they have 24 hours to connect with you before it disappears forever. So the girl has to contact you first. So it's just a more refined version of Tinder, pretty it's much. Been, it, it was started by this guy who's a nerd and couldn't get girls to <laughs> ever sense. send him messages. So now he made an app so um, that they could send him messages. How do I get them to talk to me? Oh, yeah. They have to send them first. Bumble, it's called? I think it's called Bumble. Let Bumble. me check. I have a couple messages Did you waiting. download it? Yeah, of course I downloaded it. Did you get any it. swipes? Yeah, I got some. I'm talking to some girls right now, man. Some dudes? They're what? all local. No, Is it's there not. any geotagging on their pictures? Can you give me that? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's called. Yep, Bumble. 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 Why isn't it called Bumble? Fuck. I know, right? <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, uh, now the video explains how husbands suffer from having to take their wives' pictures all the time. Some ex- excerpts from the video include: "Behind every cute girl on Instagram is a guy like me." And a brick wall. I've had to delete all the apps on my phone just to make room for more photos. I'm basically a human selfie stick. We take so long to get anywhere because we're taking pictures of our feet. (laughs) We used to eat our food. Now we just take pictures of it. Now the ad ends with, there are many Instagram husbands out there. And we want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. Oh my God. I, don't, I am see, here with you. I don't take the pictures. Though we're far apart, you're always in my heart. You are not alone. I'm here with you. Though we're far apart. You're really getting far, into that. Always Killed in it. my heart. Should be like a one, one verse like, yep. like limit. Yep. Um, Every day I walk down. What I hate is taking pictures and then let me say, let me say it. Can I say it? Yeah, exactly. I don't really like that. Let's well, take another one. It's, I was it's like, the worst when you do it for someone you don't know and they're like, take our picture real quick, and then they ask you fifty times to take it. It's like, oh, come on, no, do I you a favor do that. first. I think of I just all. look really fucking mean no. all the time. People do you, don't ask me. Do you know what I do when they ask me to take their picture? The first thing I do is I hold it out, I reverse the camera, and take, take a, a of couple yourself. of selfies yeah. of me before <gasps> I take their picture. My brother does it that all the time. That way, when they get it back home, they're like, "Who the hell is this guy?" That is awesome. And bam, you just have pictures in some random person's phone, and you got yeah, their geotag data. <laughs> what? Uh, oh. Uh, so they end that with, uh, if you or someone you know is an Instagram husband, help is out there. Go to InstagramHusband.com and see how millions of men just like you have found hope. Uh, if you head to that website, list off symptoms symptoms of the disease. It offers awareness. Give tips on approaching your wife about the matter. Gives tips uh, and more. And I posted the video. It's over on the website. You can tip. check it out. I got a tip for, for everybody out there. Tip to tip? It, yep. I think we got some hashtags that we might as well fire off. When Tell we... her, shut the hell up. <laughs> Sit down and make me a meal. <laughs> Get back in the kitchen. <laughs> Screw your Instagram account. Oh, man. Get your ass back in the kitchen. Where you belong. And make me some dumplings. Who's he talking about? <laughs> My wife. Oh, you're talking about the Instagram thing. Yeah. Oh, Welcome Instagram to news, husbands. Jared. Welcome to news. I'm Glad sorry. You're paying I, attention. I, I, well, I, I had an idea about giving us hashtags for going. Uh, it was something. Write it down. I already forget you what it is. You got this giant iPad Pro in front of you. Well, I forget what I wanted to say now. It was something. Squirrel. It was something about hashtags that Todd. Something about geotag hash- locations. Yeah, it was something about uh, hashtag panties or something like geotag your panties. Geo panties. You know, feel free to do that. Yeah. Hashtag geotag your panties. Geotag your panties. Something like that. Killed it. Yep. Nailed that. And final news story. GoPro has released more details about their upcoming drone. They still in business. They are still their in business. Their stock went from 92 down to like 17. Not wow. Good. I'll check where it's at right now while you're telling the story. Now, they didn't really release much information about the drone, but they did release a new video and actually named it. Uh, a new promo video, it unveiled the name. It's set to be called Karma, and it karma, comes with karma, the tagline. Karma, 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 Instant karma, karma? karma? Just Karma. It comes with the tagline, okay. if life is a dream, then why not see it as one? Yeah, they're, they're up $2.39 as of now to nineteen twenty eight after announcing that. Now, they also hinted karma. 
on their website exactly what kind of drone it is. They say the uh, it's an ultra portable fold- folding drone and will be coming in 2016. So not much info, but I did want to update everyone out there on GoPro's upcoming drone. Good, and that's I, can, it for good I can not figure out how to fly that one. Ultra portable folding drone. I'm surprised they went with that idea. The folding part. They probably went with smaller so they could get the price down to like two ninety nine. I guarantee it's going to be at least a thousand dollar drone. I guarantee I like it's going to be smaller. Under it's bucks. easier when you geotag somebody to get really <laughs> close and in the doors and windows, <laughs> and nobody suspects you're taking pictures of them. <laughs> smaller is better in that case. All right, uh, uh, we need some wrap up photo news music to geotag your panties from audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. Let's do it. That. Todd is on the prowl for geotagged panties. <laughs> and we're out. So be- before we get to gear of the week, yep, and we want to talk about our New York City thing with... Uh, we didn't really explain that we're not doing... Well, the reason we're not doing... Um, flying solo. Flying solo this week is we had a lot to talk about about Mexico. Yep. We had a lot Olay. to talk. Ole, did you say? Mm-hmm. We have to talk about uh, New York City and what we were doing with the Sony XC10 uh, RX100 RX Mark IV and, and the XC10 from Correct. Canon that we used yep. for something else. Uh, but I have something that you guys don't know. Oh, what's that? I got you all holiday gifts. Well, not Todd, but I want to give you holiday gifts. Holiday I'm out gifts. Here. Goodbye. This is yours. Oh. <gasps> Well, it's really mine is in there, but you need to open it. <laughs> it's, it's a thank you card that he signed. <laughs> <laughs> and I put wax on it, Read too. Read the card first. Read the card first. <laughs> Ultimate ears, microsonic earplugs, and custom molds. Yeah, yeah. So this is mine. Oh, you can open that up. <laughs> Hope you don't mind the earwax. <laughs> no, you don't get to keep them. I'm going to pay. These are actually yours that These you actually... These are mine. Oh, okay. So we can use them as demonstration here. You want me to touch them? So you're so you saying you got them? me ear molds, earplugs. So you're going to yeah, do all that. Yeah, these... These earplugs. You can, put, you can put them in while we're on our conference calls. <laughs> so I got you. They look like Thank this. Thank you, man. That's awesome. These are custom molded. Oh, yeah. So I have to get you information on where to go to get them custom molded. I'll pay for that. Uh, but when you do Are they it, sweat you, resistant? No. <laughs> They're going to slip right out of my ears, man. Uh, well, whatever. I you need have some to, rubber silicone from that baby. You're going to get the long version, like... Long, these are short, right. but they need to go version. past the first canal, so it needs okay. to go in. So, so do I just go to a doctor? An audiologist. They, just, they have okay. a list on their website of people that do it. Okay. Uh, they awesome. have to do it right, and then we mail it in to Ultimate Ears, and then they mold it. How much does the mold cost? I'm just curious. These are 170 bucks. Money's well, the actual mold, though. It's like $25. That's not bad To have all. that made. Okay. Cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I actually have uh, three shows coming up. I have Chris Cornell. I'm well, shooting. you won't have them in time. Brian Fallon. They hopefully need to be you're not news. deaf by the time that's done. <laughs> they by need the time to be, you get them, hopefully you can I've hear. I've got my crappy $20 earplugs for now, but They need be to be in by tomorrow in order to have them for the holidays. For the holidays. So you won't have them for the holidays yeah, yet. that's fine. Son Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Joe, there's a box, little box over there for you and a freaking card. For oh. Joe? Yeah. And Todd got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to write you know in there TBD because <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, but there's a box there, too. The little box. Here's the a little box. Here's an IOU pink slip. Yeah, little boxes. <laughs> little boxes. No, the, to the right. In Joe's defense, you have like 30 boxes over there. Do I? Yeah, seriously, yes. there's cardboard yeah, boxes that one. All, everywhere. Jerry gets mad when you don't get the right one. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. <laughs> it's a microphone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Now not. would have been the best. <laughs> well, I didn't want it to uh, be too predictable. We should have just put no, it. No, open the card first, dick. <laughs> I wonder oh, what it typical is. typical asshole. <laughs> Screw the card. I don't care who it's from, Mom. What's the... It's a thank you note. <laughs> it's another thank you note. I don't remember what I wrote, but what's in the box? Uh, he literally wrote thank you and what scribbled is, his name. <laughs> it's a bag. It's a bag. <laughs> I'm not talking oh, the rest. I'm that's done. great. <laughs> and so time to move on. Todd, you still want that bag? <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. You could steal it. <laughs> He's not even talking to the mic. <laughs> so what were you going to do? Move into Gear of the Week next? Uh, yeah, Gear of the Week, and then we'll talk about the Sony discussion in New York, yeah. All right, Joe, I need Gear of the Week. That's funny. <laughs> uh, gear of the Week is brought to you, well, not brought to you by anybody. Peter Hurley just came out with his old own sandbags. Squinch? You What's like sandbags, Todd? What's he do with the squinch? <laughs> 
<laughs> so he came out with his own sandbags for traveling because he always runs into the issues that he can't travel with them because they're too heavy. So he had these made, which are very nice. They can zipper together. But what's cool, I do actually have to pee, is they come with their own their their own vat bladder uh, bag, their own bladder in a bag. Heartbeat. So if you ever need to pee, you can then. There's no way you're squeezing your uh, hog in that thing, though. I actually used that. I earlier. think it might be painful. How's it taste? Hmm. There's it, no way you're fitting your junk in that. It's for fit. No, your junk isn't fitting. Maybe Joe's. Well, maybe. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> um, so basically, it comes with this vat. And when you get to where you're going, you fill it up with water, then put it in. And when you leave, you now have your own uh, your sandbags. Sample. Oh. They come in a couple different sizes. Don't know how much they are. Uh, check out Peter Hurley's website. It's a lot of information he gave us. I, Peter Hurley's details. website. Joe, you happy with that? Yeah. Screw you, Joe. Do you Joe. have a bag? Joe's like, oh, that's what I just got. You have a bag? Yeah. What, that really crappy one? No, the same one. <laughs> the other bag you gave him. The oh, I gave you a bag? <laughs> Which one'd you get? Uh, oh, yeah, this is different. That's a backpack. <laughs> okay, that's true. All right, moving on. I to actually, I have a streetwalker as well, and I go back and forth between my sling I love bag street walkers. and the streetwalker. All right, um, move on? Yeah. So thank you, on. Peter, for sending those out. But before we do that, Joe, give that box to Todd. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Because I got the same thing from Amazon. I you think. don't know what it is. I think I do know what it is. Todd, Joe, open it for him so he can sit there, but only give him the letter that's inside. Is first. it a real doll? <laughs> it could be. Stop whispering, dicks. Oh, I, I was completely off. <laughs> Why don't you want to be surprised, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> what did he get? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Joe, give him what else is in the bag. In the box. You should have just filled it with Sit nothing. Down, Joe! I know. I was going to fill it, it with nothing. It should have just been nothing. It's a box inside I wish it was a goddamn tether tools when I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's going to dump his it's laptop. Like the whole box in a box trick. <laughs> oh, it's a stupid fucking bag. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants that shit? <laughs> Did you really want a bag? Uh, uh, I'll definitely use it. I need a bag. Yeah, I need a bag. <laughs> what, do you, what do you use now? That like crappy Cannon backpack cannon that you backpack have? Well, with, no, I do have like one that's, um, uh, what you call it, Calumet, that big one. But oh it's too God. big. It's, it's too not big. any better. It's well, too big. What was in the box? Your freaking bag. <laughs> yeah, she raw bag. Are you done complaining about it? I gotta find something else to complain about now. <laughs> Can I have another bag? One Can more. I get two bags? I need two bags. Morgan needs one <laughs> for her food. <laughs> <laughs> you cost me a bunch of money uh, in gifts. How's that feel? You mean gifs? Gifs. <laughs> you like earplugs? You wanted? You think custom earplugs are good? That's one. perfect. Because I've been jealous of you every time we go to concerts together, and you you can't even like hear me every time. No, I can like, hear what? you. I can hear what? you. I can hear you better. Oh, really? Yeah, they're gonna well, be. Then the you just don't respond to me when we're at a show. <laughs> or maybe well, I don't. Yeah. They're gonna be the twenty-five decibel ones. Is that what you have? Yeah, not okay. the fifteen. That's not enough. twenty-five. You want to get the most. Yeah, dude. But the show sound amazing. I think I have with the ones I have right now are rated for like thirteen dB. <laughs> All right. Uh, holiday gifts are done. We talked about Bumble. <laughs> So last week, right the day before we went, I went to uh, Mexico, we went up to New York to do a real world review of the Sony RX 100 IV. Yep. Uh, that was, you know, in that the was coming show. In the coming New Year. <laughs> yep. I did not flip out. <laughs> Only like 15 10 times. minutes into it. Well, no, what happened right off the train, though? What happened right after the train? I got recognized twice. That was an ego boost for like five seconds, and then it just all went downhill. <laughs> all right, cool, guys. We're here. All right, let's, let's go where we need let's to go next. It. Yeah, To follow yeah. this schedule, Jared's like, I need to shoot. Well, <laughs> I need to shoot. First off, if I don't have... Look, yes, we make a, we make a, a, a temporary schedule of things we want to shoot. Temporary It's not schedule. temporary. Yeah, it but is I can't a schedule. follow it. What you guys have to remember is that we're not like other shitty YouTube channels out there where the photographers on them can't take pictures. You mean pictures. where they just randomly run around with a camera and don't follow any schedule <laughs> or script? No, more so they run around without a, they run around without with a script. Without any idea what they're doing. But can't get a good photo, which is most of the channels out there. I have to focus on not only being able to perform in front of the camera and deliver solid, in my opinion, what are solid images. Getting the best photos Every ever. Every review. If I don't have solid images, I shouldn't be reviewing a product. 
If you can't shoot photos, you shouldn't be a product reviewer. You have to trust that where we're trying to go during these shoots, we know you're going to be able to shoot no, stuff there. but it's not that it's where we're going. It's that I need more time than you going, oh my God, we need to get here, we need to get here, we need to get here, when I feel like I haven't gotten anything. That was it. But it, it, I saw the picture. I've edited the pictures. They Holy look good. Jesus. The most awesome picture so far that I saw. And when we do the, when the real world review goes up in the next couple days uh, or week or whenever it goes up. It'll be soon. It'll there be will huge. be all the JPEGs. There will be a bunch of raw files to play with. JPEGs. Oh, uh, but the panoramics JPEGs. are shot in JPEGs. But oh my God, when those panoramics JPEGs work. Look clean though, yeah. When they work and you get it to, you get the angle and everything right. You mean when Steven holds the camera. <laughs> when Steven right. shoots them. <laughs> oh my God, do they look amazing. You're welcome. Oh my God. Love the viewfinder. I'm not going to give away too much of the review yeah. because I want people to check it out. There are obviously issues. There's always going to be issues. No cameras there's perfect. There's pros. There's cons. But you're just going to have to check out this review. Uh, I, could, I was surprised with when we went to Magnolia Bakery. And I was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm take glad pictures. we pulled out the cameras because we weren't going to film there. We were just going to literally take stop and get coffee well, and pee. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that was the initial reason we stopped was to take a piss. Well, we almost um, peed ourselves. And then the fact that these guys are waiting in line for 30 minutes to take Somebody a pee. Somebody was dropping a massive deuce. Someone was dropping a little <laughs> yeah. baby Was it Taco off. Bell Becky? It was They were incredible. dropping off a stand-in baby. Um, the guy just came out and he's like, my bad. Did he say something? He didn't even say anything. He was just like, and then guess what he did? Didn't Went behind it. the counter to work. I mean, I don't know if he washed his hands or not. I'm sure he washed his hands. Well, all employees must wash hands. Yeah. I mean, you got to go. You got to go. Yeah. Got to go to move. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm glad we pulled out the cameras for that because you got some great pictures inside there. And that wasn't expected. Like I said, we were just going to stop in there real quick and boom. Exactly. I crushed that cupcake, by the way. Amazing. <laughs> oh, do you don't know what happened to the third cupcake, do you? Well, you made Adam walk did you, around did there. Did you the give time. it to the, the conductor guy? Yeah. So every yeah. time the conductor on the train walked by, I opened the box. He was a cool guy. And he was just like, you're killing me. Yo, bro. He's come like, on, you're man. Killing me. Come on, bro. And, I, and, and I'm like, you want it? He's like, I do, but I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. So by the end of the train, but somewhere around, I'm like, dude, just take it. If you want it, just take it. Yeah. So I gave him I gave him the other one. I mean, that was like 20 minutes later, though, after he passed like five after or six times. So I broke he <laughs> was the look, open box. This guy was in good shape. Yeah. He wasn't in bad shape. He was he was good. He, he could was do slim. It. He was slim. Yeah, he was slim. Pictures on the subway with Adam. I think that is my personal favorite picture because really? it's so sharp, yet you were at what, one fifteenth, one fifteenth of, a of a second? That's when we were all crammed together? Yeah. Well, man, it was really? rushing. I mean, I'm 630. like bumping back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even hold on to the pole. It was yeah. bad. That's what she said. Waiting for that. Yeah. Where's that response? Couldn't hold on to the pole. You need more practice. Uh, anyway, stuff I wanted to talk about was uh, like us getting yelled at at the Empire State. Oh, should I Almost go into the story? Out? You should. So we, we go up to the Empire State Building. It's a pretty long wait. We didn't pay for VIP tickets because that was, it wouldn't have, it would saved us maybe 10, 15 minutes. Maybe, yeah. Uh, so we get upstairs. Steven's using the XC10. We did end up putting the microphone on. Uh, and so when the XC10 in the hot shoe, you put the receiver. So I'm standing there and this security guy, as we step outside, goes, doing anything special? You know, and I'm like, no, I'm just a tourist taking pictures was my response because I knew exactly what he was getting you know, at. Suit and all, walkie talkie. So then we're shooting. We're shooting. I'm talking to the camera. I'm just talking to the camera because I thought it would be cool. This guy with a mask on because it's windy and cold and they're out, outside up there all the time. He comes over. He goes, that's a professional looking camera. Hold on. Thank Actually, you. we were filming. No, we were in the middle of filming the panoramic section. Can you show that or no? Yeah, if you want to, we'll just pause it real quick. I'll run that clip and then. Well, you could just run the clip over. Well, it. there's audio. Oh, you want to hear him? Yeah, we can hear him actually talking. All right, let's do that. Let's do that real quick. Go this direction. Start all the way over here. Lock. Focus. Go, gonna go slow. Hello. Okay. Well. Answer any questions she has. Yeah. Excuse me. I have here a gentleman with a professional looking camera with speakers and everything. <laughs> Fine. Professional looking camera. Okay. Steve. Uh, East Warner. Just, just have the supervisor check it. Okay. So uh, <laughs> just just have them check it out. Okay. They can see that. I mean, it's, it's like a, anybody else has. Rule, rules, rule. I mean, that's a professional looking camera. Uh, you want to look at this, Tony? And so 
that were, were, you could hear him trying to stop us. I didn't know he was talking to us. I didn't either because I had my ears in and you're just talking. Doing my thing. I yeah. ignored. I usually you ignore people. Much, He's like, yeah. hello, whatever he was saying. He's screaming at us. He's like, hello, hello, hello. And like trying to like, he starts like touching me and stuff. So and I'm we, like, whoa, we dude. finally talked to him and he's like, that's a professional looking he's camera. Like, stop I'm filming. Like, I'm like, so's that one. So's that one. So's that one. So what? There's a couple it's professional. Five up there. Yeah. He's like, well, this is, this is professional. I got to call my guy. So of course he calls over that guy. The guy with the walkie talkie. He's like, in the let's suit. go inside. Hey, I'm the guy right here. He's like, I asked you once already. I'm like, well, actually, you asked me what I was and he's doing. Like, Be real with me. Are he's you like, filming for something? This? Well, because the other guy was like, well, so with the other guy, we're arguing, and you already heard it, but he's just like, I'm Jesus. My best, better response would have been, hey, Jesus, I'm Jared. We're, we're, well, uh, he said, I'm Jesus because, uh, what was it like? He said, anybody could say anything. Yeah, and I could, could be anyone or Jesus. something. Yeah, that's it. And you're like, oh, are you Jesus? Yeah, I'm like, what are you, Jesus? Well, nice to meet you, Jesus. That's yeah. weird. I don't believe in him. <laughs> so, so then we go inside to talk to the guy, and he's like, you know, there's no, there's no press allowed. There's no, no commercial. He's like, are you doing it? I'm like, I'm just shooting. <laughs> Basically, uh, yeah, we wanted to get the shot. Yeah. So we got the shot. Yep. I mean, believe me, we're they not the first. And let us film. We're not the first people to go up into the Empire State Building to get video to use somewhere they wouldn't let me shoot out front though yeah i That's don't understand that todd you also couldn't front? shoot out there yep yep i was just well i was i was at the turnstile when you said you were guys were coming down i was oh, at he the went turnstile the building. he did i was ah. at the turnstile no no, i wasn't inside i was outside at outside. the turnstile on the sidewalk. oh like, you mean the, the aiming the, at the exit turnstile i was like mean, oh jared's God. about to come out here revolving soon. door huh revolving door Revolving door. Well, the turn thing. Yeah. No, a turnstile is the thing you get out of when you All go right, the in the The revolving door. The revolving door. You're, so I'm waiting for you to come through the revolving door. So I'm just pointed there. Just, he's coming any second. It'll be coming any second. Any second. And the guy's like, you can't shoot down yeah. here like this. And I was like. You're on public street. He's like, is that, is that video? The dumbest answer I ever gave. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you can't shoot down here. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. And then I was like, shit. So I stopped and I was like, I'm, I'm about to shoot again. Which, and then, and but then. You two come out the center door anyway. Like yeah. You didn't even come through the revolving I door. I don't anyhow, like the revolving so. door. I, I feel like this must look a lot more like a camcorder than an actual he DSLR. Because well, when you got people the eyepiece, I think the eyepiece gives it away. Yeah, like if you're actually holding it up yep. like this. Because people had 5D Mark III's upstairs, yeah. uh, a bunch of DSLRs. And I mean, they're, some of them are more expensive than this type yeah. of camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but, you know, yes, I was giving that guy a bunch of crap, the guy with the mask on. But then we had how we, we talked to the guy for like, 15, well, about 10 minutes upstairs about when he came to Philly. He actually ended up being a really yeah. cool dude. We had a oh, civil right. conversation. Really cool guy. Yeah, yeah. We, I think he felt bad for like was interrupting us. Was it cold up there, and, though, oh, that whole time? Only on one of, the, one of the four sides was it absolutely oh a God, wind tunnel. Like 90 miles an hour. Really? Unbelievable. It was insane, man. That's tough. Me, me, now, me and Adam on the flip side were down below really roughing it in Starbucks. Yeah. So that happened. Adam helped us. Adam was assisting for the day, basically be our chaperone, helping us get to where we needed to be, all of that good stuff. How about in uh, Central Park, too, under the bridge where that model was posing well, and you were playing the whole runaround game trying to take pictures of her? <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, I'll <laughs> talk about that. I'll, take, I'll do this. So there was this young photographer girl and there was this gorgeous model wearing a dress in public. She looked good. And there was an assistant. And so I'm like, all right, I'll get some pictures because I'm testing a camera. And so every time we moved or Adam moved, the assistant would just wallow on over and try to block your shot. So Please you do stole not their take shot. out pictures. Well, I understand. You know, I was being a uh, kind of a dick until don't take pictures of our pictures, please. Well, dude, I and I have footage of some of that too, and it's so awkward to watch. <laughs> so awkward. So you know, he's like, you wouldn't want this happening when you were shooting, and you know, he's right. So when we saw him again... And you were like, it's public space. It's public space. Uh, it, yeah, the douche is. came out immediately, and I think you dialed it back. Well, what happened yeah. is I, I saw him again in the park. You made amends, yeah. And I walked over to him. I said, look, I shouldn't have done that. You're absolutely right. I said, I was, I was being a That's dick. It's good that you did that. I shouldn't have been a dick. I'm sorry. And he's like, it's all good. She's worked really hard to put this together, and it's a distraction. I'm cool. like, you're right. I, I, I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. I... I would want the same thing. Yeah, you know, and I, so yeah, we saw them throughout the rest. We of the just day kept running in into Central them. Park. I feel yeah. like we were f like we were following each other. Well, oh, we yeah. were chasing light it was, all day. It was the perfect light spot yeah, every we were time. Chasing for, like, the light all great. day. Yeah. yeah. So he was right. You know, it's just like yeah, no, you're right. I'm wrong. And did you want to bring up anything about the XC10s when we were shooting? I know that was was that your first time using them. <sighs> yeah, it was the first time me using. I mean, what the did only, you think? The only I, I I love the form factor. I love the run and gun. The only thing I don't like is. How slowly sometimes Focus. the auto focuses. Yeah. 
And then, Focus it, and then manual rough. focus is really almost as slow anyhow because you literally crank, well, crank, yeah, the, crank. That's weird, man. Crank it because so there's to no, give it there's almost like you're, three you're, or four. You're not spins. doing any whip pans. Like there's no whip panning no. in that in that camera. Whip so there's nothing dramatic you're doing there. If you are forth. doing the focus tracking, which tracks the face, I mean the the face tracking, yeah, uh, which is great if you're tracking someone like him um, and he's just kind of staying there most of the time. It works great. And you can do like a whip pan on that. That's, yeah. that's not bad. Now, that feature seemed to work well. But if you have that feature on and you try and lock focus on a static item, uh, it doesn't focus. It's trying to find a face I, and it just won't focus. And, and I was shooting a lot more of the B-roll, like the camera in his hands. Like yep. you were getting like him talking and I'd get the camera in his hands. And it was like, well, there'd I think be we times I'd be like, focus, please focus, please focus, I think please we focus. turned off the facial tracking on your camera yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah, just do yeah. manual focus each time. Yep. Um, or push the I only wish there was an option that I could do if I wanted to go manual I could go manual and that it would be as responsive as I'm used to on on like another lens yeah for sure um, the only other issue I had was the audio channels in New York and Times Square huh. uh, because there's so much stuff going on and we had this uh, little police thing going on this I don't know what it was called I mean do you think that was the, the receivers though not the camera necessarily the microphone stuff it's just that there's no open channels there's That's no what open I'm saying. frequencies so it was more so it was just there's so the much going channel, on around yeah. us for a wireless frequency to clean one to come through true facts uh, I, eventually, I eventually found one open channel but then that channel started to pick up the actual walkie talkies from the police officers uh, next to us yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. we eventually got one of a them, which was a fan. Yeah, out. well, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to take photographs. I mean, they had assault rifles. So there was cops in Times Square. There were cops in Times Square. Just They have a police station there, and they're just showing their presence in case somebody wants to do something. They're there ready to shoot. Um, and the guy walks up. He's like, big fan. Love your videos. And I'm like, cool. Awesome. Thank you. You know, obviously humble. And then he's like, can, right. can we take... Shut up, Todd. <laughs> can we take photos of them and... So I asked the woman. She was all for it. She asked for the card so she could ask for some of the photos. And there were a bunch of them there. We got a really a lot of good photos there because Times Square was very difficult to get photos. Uh, with, there was so much light. I was shocked. It wasn't just the light. It was just there wasn't a lot to shoot if I'm just going to shoot portraits. But then what was cool, or just street scenes, what ended up happening is the two we people... we went there for low light is what I mean. There were two people sitting at a table, just a couple, just hanging out, a young couple. And the guy's like, I... I love watching your videos. I was like, awesome. You too. Can we do the kissing dip shot here? And they were like, yeah. So I was able to have subjects to take photos nice. of because they were readers and they knew of the stuff. Oh, well, That's speaking great. of listeners and readers, Steven and I are there with cameras waiting to shoot something of you. And this guy rolls up on us. Oh, my God. I and he freaked was like, out. And he was like, what's going on, guys? And we were like, before he introduced shit. himself or anything, and me and like, Todd have the we cameras. Were like, uh, and we're like, uh, I he's don't in know. like a suit. And he looked really official. I'm like, uh, I don't know. He's like, love you guys on the podcast. Like, oh. I was like, what? We thought you were just going <laughs> to. Uh, oh, that was bad. Yeah. yeah. I definitely yeah. thought he was going to. Well, he heard that we to... would be in Times Square, so he came out. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, other than that, I'll just leave you with the one thing I absolutely love about this is the pop up viewfinder. Well, I love the OOL. I love the viewfinder. The OLED display. The OLED display that yeah. pops up. I always the only one thing I hope they figure out how to do is make sure that this thing pops up itself. Automa pops automatically out. pops out kind yeah. of thing. Automatically yeah. pops out uh. because if it's not popped out, everything is blurry when you look through. Is that the diopter that pops out? Is that what that is? Well, it's the I it's, assume. Well, it's partly that, but it allows you to focus on the screen. Meaning diopter. it pulls it out so it's the right distance and magnifies the screen and looks right. Yeah. But other than that, well, you can watch the whole review, see all the different things. Coming up. It'll be on the website. Just take a look for that. It'll be on Facebook and, and, and YouTube and all that. It's a long day, but worth it. It was. And then I got home at, we got home around 11. I went to bed at 2 and was back up to get to the airport in the morning. <sighs> Man. Yay. So now it's time for Wheel of Fro. Yay. We're going to go around the wheel first and then we get into the new sounds that people send in. Yep. All right. And remember when I said send sounds in, somebody's going to get to spin the Wheel of Fro. All right, here we go. On the wheel, we've got audioblocks.com slash go slash fro. That's where we get all of the... Is that where that sound's coming from? Yeah. Audioblocks? Everything. That's Todd from Audioblocks. So I, what I'll tell you is, uh, let's see. In the next couple of weeks, I will have a new discount for uh, Audioblocks. Uh. That's a good one. Oh, my God. That's a good and one. And also one for video blocks. <gasps> so pay attention. It's coming up. Individual videos are going to tell you how you can save big. Save big. Save big. Save billions. Save, well, not quite billions, but save save big. 
bucks. Uh, Lexar, the official card of Raw Talk, which we've been seeing a lot of people using them. We put the CFast cards into here. We put the SD cards into here. We use SD. I don't what, have what do you have? Oh, anymore. you took it out? Yeah, I took it out. We got the CFast. We have micro SD and the other cameras uh, and all that good stuff. So we use the Lexar cards Everything, more and yeah. more. Hoya! Hoya! Glad you fixed the sign. By the Joe, new year. Go 27. Good job. By the new year. By the new year. You sure? By the new if year. If you only yeah. had a printer. That's weird. You I had like a three hanging out back there. If you only had a printer, we could maybe do something if about only. it. If only. I have to do that. But Hoya, I use the HD3 circular polarizer 82 millimeter. He's in Mexico, right? I use that in Mexico. Mexico. Olé. Mexico. Uh, Rode Microphones, they're this week's sponsor. Don't forget to go to Rode.com slash Santa because you can win something between Monday the 14th <laughs> and Friday the 18th. <laughs> Joe Citrusta. <laughs> Joe's still not get. Joe can enter though, but he may not win. He's not getting a road microphone for Christmas. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> question mark? You win anything around the wheel you want? Not the main prize though. Borrow lenses? <laughs> anything? Two hundred and fifty dollar gift card to borrow lenses. Fro prize? Can I get my? Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Todd already got his bag. Finally. Uh, squarespace.com slash fro to get your 14 day free trial of Squarespace it's what I use it's what Steven will use one day and uh, a lot of fro readers over 4,000 fro readers use it now nice uh, videoblocks.com slash go slash fro that's where we get a lot of the b-roll video that we put over uh, that we cut in I'm sure there will be some in the New York review as well all the yes. really good looking stuff that's that's video uh, blocks <laughs> oh. Lexar again black rapid we got road microphone we have spin again black Hole at Arama Picks, get free credit or get something. We don't know what it is, but when you land on it, we figure it out. Fro Prize again and Think Tank Photo, which is what it landed on last week. Those are the two bags that I gave Todd and Joe are my Think Tank Retrospective 30s, the I Shoot Raw edition that you can get at store.fronosphoto.com for $20 off. <laughs> you can save $20 <laughs> when you do so. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, put your bag away, Todd. It's time for you to talk about this, the audio. Uh. <laughs> Great. Great. So, oh, it's broken already. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> uh, so what are we doing? Wheel of Fro? All right, so we got a, bu a bunch of people a ton that, that this sent week, in. Man. And where can they send it, Stephen? Singwheelofro at gmail.com. Singwheelofro. Now, we Record asked it on whatever. Send yeah, it in. We well, asked, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Even if you just have a cell phone, yep. record Anything. into the cell phone yeah. and email in this, email the file in. You could win, you could spin the wheel of fro from that. Yep. Yeah. So and we want them to say, spin that wheel. Now you can say it, you know, however Which, you like, want. Which, like, nobody did. You can do whatever like, you and want. everybody's like, you know what, Todd, we're going to do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. So here's a couple we have today. Here's, uh, here's Chris Jacks. Are we going Jocks. through all of them, by the way? They're not, well, th these are the highlights. Okay, cool. Spin that wheel. He's got a deep voice. That's a pretty standard one there, I would say. Solid. That's that's pretty standard. Thank you for sending it in. Um yeah. here's and here's surprisingly, this is like a Sasquatch. Here's a female listener wow. <laughs> who sent one in. So rare. Yep, here's here she is. Kirby Hartline. Spin that wheel. Now, Kirby also is a fan of, an, of, of, of the show in another way. She sent us a special one. Oh, yeah? This is Taco Bell, Becky. Eh? <laughs> and I want you to spin that wheel. So. <laughs> yes. What That's I would say great. is uh, stop jocking my style <laughs> um, or I will cut you. Uh, I know about geotracking. Uh. <laughs> uh, now, here is Jeremy Prysox. 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 Butcher that name. Prysox. Prysox. Good job, Todd. Butcher that. Yeah. Spin that wheel. That's a good one. Again, pretty standard. That's a good one. That'll match up nicely. Now, we have another <laughs> submission from Philip. Philip. <laughs> Philip. Plav. Plavsic. 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 Philip Plavsic. And he, this is Darth Vader. Oh. Spin. <laughs> Wee. Sure, that's not Bane. It might it's be like Bane. A combination of both of them. It's also when Jared calls me at like eleven o'clock at night. I'm like, <laughs> what? What do you want? What? Now, um, we got another one here from Ed Rhodes. 
totally didn't listen to any direction here. <laughs> so here's this one. Good job, Ed. And uh, check it out. Look at this wheel of fro. I spin it around and watch it go. Will it land on Lex or cards? Or maybe the question mark. <laughs> He's going all out. Wait, was that Chad Kroger? He's still going. Way funnier than Jared when he does it. Way funnier. <laughs> that was hilarious. Way funnier. Yeah. Oh, uh, now here's somebody else getting into the act with singing, but apparently he can't sing because he had to auto tune it. Man, a lot of submissions. Spin that so that was Drake. I mean, I mean, David King. Hotline Bling. It was David King. I thought it was Drake for a minute. Um, now here is uh, Daniel John Jones. You know, he just picked a selection of a few. Uh, AKA like Alvin. Alvin. AKA Alvin. Spin. I love these all. He spent some time on that one. Here's Jordan Gorgadrail. Spin that wheel. Now, the reason I picked that one is it sounded like he recorded it like under the covers. So under Bob went here. I was like, what are you. <laughs> so, anyway, there's that. Now, um, here, here is uh, Darren Turner, who decided to bring his children. Into this podcast, Aww. which is always a great nice sign. Hold on, let, me, let me remind you that if you submit this, that means we can use it on the show. Yes. So you know, you may not want your parent, your kids, to listen to this episode, but here they are. Hi, Jared, Stephen, and Todd. I oh. thought I'd let my sons Oi, help the do the spin the wheel intro. They just like to say hello. hello. Say hi, Hayden. Hello. Say hello, hello. Miles. Hi. Say hello, Dexter. Hello. Say hello, Logan. <laughs> Say hello. Hey. Apparently, two times Leon. sex time over there because he's got a ton of kids. Good boy. Right. On three. Ready? Spin that wheel. One, two, three. Spin that wheel. Ooh, they did I love Christmas the guys. accent. They did a good job. Jared bit my finger. <laughs> now these last two are pretty good. Same these have pers- to be all of them. Yeah. This is the this is the end. He's That's a lot. Them. Yeah. This is the end. Well, there was a there was way more than this. Was there? So. Wow. The, these are like a harmony thing that this guy did. Um, the first one this I will good. play is just spin that wheel. Spin that oh, we haven't? wheel. Now I saved this last one because it's about loving Fro, and I didn't want to stroke his eagle too soon. We love. We love. We love. Yep, a lot. That's legit. <laughs> that, that's that's great. pretty good one there. So with that being said, I love that one. That's all we got. That was Christian, Christian Chir- Cheerios, Torino, Torinos. Thank to you. Where can they send them in? Uh, Spinwheelafro at gmail dot com. You can get sing, creative. Yeah, sing do whatever wheel you want. Fro at gmail dot com. Sing wheel of fro. Sing wheel of fro. Yep, and we will get them and you know showcase them on the show. I don't, I don't show? know if you have to be that creative, but. Jerry gets a kick out of them. I think they're funny. Yeah. So we have to pick a winner this week. And well, we can can we go back in future weeks and pull back from up past ones maybe to win? Sure. Yeah, we can figure it out. Who do you out. want this week? What did you guys like? What stood out to I you? I like the last one personally. I like the singing one that sounded like Chad Kroger. That was good. Too. Uh, There's a lot that was of good kind ones. Of funny. Joe, well, what do you think? <laughs> Shut up, Joe. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I lo- I did like the woman's uh, Taco Bell Becky one though. Maybe that next week. Bold move. So so you kind of like. Look at this wheel of fro. <laughs> I spin it around and watch it go. He's like really we'll getting get into it. Yeah. Or possibly a question mark. <laughs> Is he still together with your girl? Spin that wheel of fro. You know what I. I, I, I'll, I'll agree with that one. Yeah, I, well, I think Ed Rhodes is is the guy this week. All right, let's spin all this right, damn let's wheel. Spin it forever. Forever. I spin the wheel, and Ed I will Rhodes. actually, I'll play. I'll actually play his song while it spins. <laughs> all right, ready? Yeah. And go. Around and around it goes. Where it stops, <laughs> nobody knows. Maybe it would be a question mark, <laughs> or possibly a leg or cut. It's gonna stop on oh, oh. shit! Oh, oh. Adorama picks. We were That's just close. short. Maybe Adorama picks, and you could totally take good <laughs> picks. <laughs> 
congratulations. You're going to get something from Adorama Picks. Please send uh, an email. Yeah, yeah. Can he just email back to spinning, singing, spiel, wheel of fro? Sure. Because so, well, we have his email, right? I just don't want the email to get too cluttered. And no, all right. Does he? We have his email. Yeah, we have his email. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll email you this time to get more information. Okay, cool? sure. So that is the Wheel of Fro, uh, and that's going to bring us to the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, something a little different this week, but still good, yeah. in my opinion. So uh, we talked Mexico. We talked all of that. Don't forget about the road... Santa road.com slash Santa. That's only from Monday till Friday. So you better go check it out because you could win. So I, I hope they give away. They always give away good stuff. They always do. <laughs> Everybody's I'm getting sorry, a Santa microphone except that prick Joe. <laughs> Everybody gets a microphone. Maybe land on road microphone. Oh, I love the singing one. Look uh, at this wheel of fro. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, watch that thing go. They should do a duet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe stop on Alexa card or possibly uh, the question mark. Man. Uh, 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 so that's going to be it. For all the photo news and more, go to fronosphoto.com slash rawtalk-162. You can check out some of the photos that I took uh, when I decide to po- uh, post them. We have the Sony thing. That will be coming up. You've got your gifts, and that's where we'll leave it. Yeah? Yeah. Anything? Todd? No, that's good. Steven? Thank you for the gift. Joe? Yeah, whatever. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hashtags, by the way. Oh, uh, Ending show uh, hashtags. Well, Joe, what, what no road microphone said? for Joe. We need to come up with some kind of hashtag like... Hashtag federales. Hashtag federales, which I don't even know how to spell. I was going to say, how do you even spell that? Just you guys figure I'll out Google how to spell, at, you know, at Frono's photo. Hashtag make, fellatio federales. <laughs> something with federales in it. Make sure you hashtag it if you got this far. I actually really like that one, though. Hashtag fellatio federales. You like doing it or the hashtag itself? Oh, <laughs> touche. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to be it. Jared Poland, Frono'sphoto.com. See ya. your bag, you don't actually get to keep it.